So in today's video, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into goddess work and offer something that is, um, I think, really helpful for anyone in any part of the journey that they're at, whether you're just embarking on goddess work or if you're really deep into it. I think knowing what I'm going to be talking about, which is different goddess archetypes, um, knowing where you fall under those helps so much to understand yourself a bit better and to get to know more intimately what are the powers and the strengths that I have to bring in terms of like what it means for me to live in my divine feminine and thus from that place of divine feminine create and nourish and commune and facilitate and all those beautiful things. <laughs> Yes, okay. It's honestly, it's a who. <laughs> I'm nervous. I feel like this video immediately feels like a whole new vibe because I'm filming at night. I'm filming at nighttime. I usually film um, during the day so that I have um, God's lighting because I always trust that better than a computer and candles and my salt lamp. But that's all that we really have right now. I hope that you are well or as well as you possibly can be given the circumstances of existing, particularly in between, if you're watching this during the time of upload, these eclipses, because they're really not, they're leaving no survivors. If you are new to me, my name is Jasmine Kylene. I'm a spiritual counselor, I'm a journalist. I am a 26 year old who more accurately identifies as a 14 year old, honestly. And I'm so excited to share this video. By the way, pardon whatever's going on inwardly. I fully am sick. It's not COVID, because we should still be wondering if our colds are COVID, and it's not, because I tested, but um, it's giving congestion, it's giving, I went too hard on the Milky Ways on Halloween and I feel like that alone shut down my immune system and I immediately woke up with illness. So here I am. But um, if you are familiar with me at all, then you know that I work a lot um, in the goddess realm. I work with goddesses a lot in my own personal work and then I also facilitate goddess workshops, goddess activations. I teach a lot about what it means to live as an activated and embodied goddess. and. The goddess journey ebbs and flows in that like there's different initiations and in different parts of the journey and I am in a brand new part of the journey that I think is probably the most important one. I'm about to enter the shadow period of my Saturn return and I've been working with uh, Saima who is the woman behind Flourishing Goddess and that alone has been such a huge monumental part of the healing journey that I'm on or the part of the healing journey that I'm forever on. But um, as I've been diving in deeper to my goddess work, I wanted to offer something that is more basic, um, but also very important when it comes to introducing yourself to goddess work um, for anyone who is just on the journey at all, and that is defining where you land in the goddess archetypes. Now, there is an unlimited amount of goddess archetypes. You can define goddesses by chakras, by seasons, by elements, by cultures, by so many different ways and avenues. And so these archetypes I'm gonna be introducing and, and prompting you to discover yourself within today are just how I have navigated them on my own personal journey and how I not only define myself um, foundationally, but also where I recognize how I'm ebbing and flowing. So mind you, I'll introduce these as we go along, but even though I identify most as a pleasure goddess, I have had eras where I have needed to call on my inner dark goddess, for sure, especially during shadow work. Um, I've had eras where I've recognized that my mother is a moon goddess and like needed that nurture from her or recognized when I needed to embody the moon goddess for myself or for my friends. Um, so just know that like you can be multiple uh, archetypes of goddesses at once. You could call on one and have one be more dormant depending on where you're at and what you need in your own life. But just I think it is in knowing what goddess archetype you fall under that you have more awareness of like what are my unique powers and how can I amplify them and emphasize them a bit more in terms of the way that I show up to my work, to my relationships, to life in general. So the first goddess archetype that I use to sort of define um, goddesses or myself in my own journey is the pleasure goddess. And the reason why I'm making this one first, like a true Leo moon, is because this is the one that I identify with the most. The pleasure goddess is a goddess that lives fully in their sacral chakra, right? They're deeply connected to their sense of sensuality. And I want to be really specific when I use the word sensuality because that is distinct from sexuality. Mind you, sexuality can be found within sensuality, but sensuality rather is a life devoted to sensory and devotion to the pleasure of all of your senses. So this isn't just feeling orgasmic things, but like living an orgasmic life. Oh, there's a bee trying to get in my window. <sighs> Am I right? 
Anyway, this means to savor everything that is delicious about life. So taking in delicious colors and flavors and sounds and textures, really making sure that you live a life that is so present um, and, and so aware of how delicious every part of this existence can be. It's as if every everything that you um, ingest is like coated in honey. That's what it means to live in that sacral chakra and <laughs> chakra. That's what it means to live in that sacral chakra. And to really bask in your sensuality, knowing that you are your own sacred temple, your body is your sacred altar and all of the offerings that you give your body which is rituals and the way that you adorn yourself and the oils that you bathe yourself in and the foods that you feed yourself and the things that you witness and ingest are all beautiful and and align in alignment with the worth that you see yourself living in as your goddesses love to bask in humor and in dance and in independence and just living a very free life by their own terms so for example the ruling goddess of the pleasure goddess um, is Goddess Hathor, who I actually have a figurine of right there. She's the first goddess that I ever worked with, the first goddess that like awakened me. And when it comes to modern day goddesses, I would say Rihanna, Shakira, Rosalia, Haley Williams, even Kim Kardashian, which I know wherever you stand in terms of how you feel about certain modern day goddesses or how they, you know, came up on their come up, you know, Marilyn Monroe and Kim Kardashian are both very polarizing when it comes to how people perceive them, but one thing is for sure, they cannot rise to that height of power without being activated goddesses. And both of those women um, really lived in their bodies. And um, I don't want to say weaponized, but like allowed themselves to feel free enough in their sensuality to, um, yeah, to be a magnet to what they desired. So go off queens. We'll also say pleasure goddesses are ruled by cheetahs, by the uh, crystal carnelian, and an affirmation that I want to offer for each goddess archetype for pleasure goddesses is I live a delicious life on my own terms. The next goddess archetype that I invite you to see if you see yourself in or see someone around you in. I definitely think this that my mom is this archetype because the ruling goddess for this archetype, the moon goddess, spoiler alert, is Yamaya, but I think it's also Mother Mary and I see my mother as Mother Mary a lot. But anyway, the moon goddess is the goddess that is the most deeply in tune with her intuition and her maternal instinct, right? She is someone who is very, very, very emotionally connected to um, the ebb and flow of her sacred feeling, right? So she feels very deeply, she moves with her emotion, she's connected and embodied by, and represented by the ocean, in particular the ocean's tides and how they rise and fall, sort of like the ebb and flow, and she is typically someone that you go to when you are seeking nurture, when you are seeking healing, um, because she is in a constant state of healing, and thus is really able to hold um, and facilitate that energy for others. Moon goddesses, I think moon goddesses are so connected to water because of the fact that, you know, the moon truly rules the tides, right? And so it's so important to note that, like, anyone who cowers away from emotion, moon goddesses confront their emotion and understand that their sensitivity is their superpower. And it's the fact that they feel so deeply that they're able to live in their power because, um, yeah, I think the most beautiful part about being human in this incarnation is the fact that we are the only mammals that get to experience the full range of emotion that we do and while many try to numb themselves or run away from feeling certain feelings moon goddesses um, embrace the fact that they have a heart big enough and deep enough to feel so many things and so yeah so some modern goddesses that I think exemplify the moon goddess archetype are uh, for sure, Sade, Solange, Ariana Grande, Adele. I know for a fact um, both Solange and Ariana are Cancers. I think Adele is a Taurus and Sade is a Capricorn, I believe. But regardless, they, I think all are known to have written some of like the most potent love songs. And I just, I, I say all that to say that like, Moon goddesses feel pain very deeply, but they also feel love very loudly. It's because they're able to feel the um, the extremes of all emotion, that they're able to sort of like catalyze that and alchemize it into their own power and hold many people that may be drawn in their own emotions. They are able to 
through the survival of their own emotions, hold others. And clear quartz is a crystal that I think aligns best with moon goddesses, as well as ocean water, the ocean. So if you're a moon goddess, it is medicinal for you to visit the beach as often as you possibly can. And of course, work with the moon phases, but like, duh. And the affirmation for a moon goddess is, I honor the ebb and flow of life's tides. Next up, we have uh, the dark goddess archetype, which like, not to like have archetype envy, but like sometimes I just wish that I fell under this archetype. And it's worth noting that like you can call on the goddess within you that you know you need to be empowered by. So if you're in an era where you're like, I need more pleasure goddess, I need to feel like I am worthy of resting and eating and basking in glory. Um, that's obviously like what this whole thing is about. But it's also important to note that like who you are is who you are and the archetype that you're kind of born into being that's in your DNA and your energetic code is that of who you are and it would be difficult to try and be an archetype that you aren't already organically so like knowing who I am I just know as badly as I, I think it's so cool to be a dark goddess it's just not who I am. I've had dark goddess eras. I've had eras where I've like tapped into the energy, but like it's just not who I am. And I think this is like the coolest archetype low key. So like if you're a dark goddess archetype, go off. But yes, dark goddess archetype. I mean, just right off the bat, I'm gonna give you some examples of these so you just already know the energy. It's Billie Eilish, it's Zoe Kravitz, it's Alexa Demi, it's um, Lana Del Rey for sure, Amy Winehouse, those like siren like Megan Fox energies where they're just like there's this allure there's this captivation that emanates from their skin um, they have this ability to be in such a deep intimate relationship with their own shadow to the point where it's integrated and I think what's so important about the dark goddess is that it is the thing that people cower away from about themselves that dark goddesses embrace and wear so loudly and like that's part of their superpower they're not afraid to live in their sacred rage right whereas society kind of tells women especially to dilute their anger and to be as passive and as digestible and as palatable as possible um dark goddesses confront that right they're ruled by goddess lilith so they are rebels, um, one would say without a cause, but truthfully they're dismantling patriarchal systems and in ways of, of, um, of holding back particularly the divine feminine in a way to keep us as easily manipulated as possible. So not to go too deep into that, just know that dark goddesses are doing very important shadow and underworld work to alchemize the darkness and eventually bring it to light. So it's not like they're not um, light workers, but rather they're doing the dirty work that no one else wants to do and they're doing so in a way that's so sexy and like I just live for it. So yeah, like I said, very intoxicating allure. They're in tune with their sacred rage and they have an integrated shadow. So like I said, it's the things that people are embarrassed or ashamed of having within them. This is shame that is societally given. This is not shame that is innate. Dark goddesses confront that and say, I like um, having an intimate relationship with the taboo, with death, sex, and rebirth, right? They're ruled by snakes, so it's this element of constantly shedding skin and going deeper, um, and just being able to cut people with a gaze that is just so powerful. So yes, you're ruled by Lilith, um, Obsidian, of course, and Snake is your emblem. And the affirmation for Dark Goddess is, I embrace the parts of me that others cower from. I want to be you so badly. <laughs> I already say Billie Eilish is a dark goddess. It's just, it's the eyes, bro. Any Scorpio placements are just automatically dark goddesses, in my opinion. Next up, we have fairy goddesses, which I would love if you guys were open to telling me, like, if you had, like, if you had to give your goddess archetypes, like, a sun, moon, and rising, like, because I would say that I have a fairy goddess moon, or fairy goddess rising, but I'm a pleasure goddess sun. But yeah, so fairy goddesses um, are nature's pixies they are the goddesses that are most deeply in tuned with nature and mother nature in particular's cycles right so like they're very introverted they spend time in quiet and in solitude and are deeply connected with the seasons and the cyclical seasons right so when it's fall they tend to retreat when it's spring they tend to come out and bask and um there's this element of them that is very calm very grounding anytime you're around them there's just a sense of like and like you, they're the kind of people when you're around them you realize 
like the volume that your voice is at because you realize that they're not matching you there they're staying in the softness of where they're at and then you're like oh wait yeah I am exerting a lot of energy and doing the most let me like actually sink into this space right now um, I would say that some examples of modern day uh, fairy goddesses are Janae Aiko, Erica Badu for sure, Kalani, Alicia Keys, Vanessa Hudgens for sure. Um, and if you guys think of any like modern day goddesses that you think align with these archetypes that I haven't mentioned, please tell me. Um, I would I feel like Janet Jackson is such a metamorph. Like she can be so many different of these archetypes, but I do see fairy goddess in her for sure, especially like the volume that she speaks at. But yeah, they're very softly spoken, very introverted, need a lot of time to recharge, need a lot of time by themselves, get very easily. Um, get very easily drained by social activity their social battery is very sensitive um and they recharge best by spending time in nature spending time in parks um on trails just earthing bare feet on the ground is kind of how they come back to themselves they're ruled by lavender and chamomile i would throw in as well um goddess diana as well as peacocks because I feel like peacocks the thing about earth goddesses is that they're so in their root chakra that their crown chakra is also so healthy because it is in earth that you hear divine most clearly I feel like peacocks both embody that crown chakra energy with that like um, soil ground animal root chakra energy um, so yeah I feel like peacocks <laughs> embody them most well and the affirmation for fairy goddesses is i am always in a state of awe wonder and gratitude and the last archetype that i think is probably the most iconic and if anything like the goddess goddess of all goddess archetypes is the sun goddess right so this goddess archetype is ruled by the goddess oshun and it's giving very much solar plexus if you know anything you know that if you know anything if you know if you've worked with oshun or just in the realm of goddess spirituality at all you know that beyonce works a lot with goddess oshun um and that's just if anything, if I can just tell you got Oshun and Beyonce and just like leave you with that, I feel like you know enough about what it means to be a sun goddess, which is to be in the fullness and the unwavering state of living in your worth and in your power. Sun goddesses are so vibrant, they're so charismatic, they're so aware of, like I said, their worth and their power that their boundaries around that is unwavering and they have the bravery and the courage to go after, create, pursue, and eventually manifest their soul's desires because they do not see obstacles as things that stop them, but rather invitations to confront challenge. They're the ones who like, if you look at them, it looks like they have it all together. And the truth is that they do, but it's not stuff or it's not a life that was handed to them. It was the awareness of like, okay, well, if that's what I want and these are the steps that I have to do to get that, even though those are challenging steps, those are going to call on discipline and confidence and trust and um, devotion, I'm going to do them because if that's what I want and those are the steps to get it, like, obviously I'm going to do it. Like, they're the ones that, like, will look at people and be like, that person wants a healthier lifestyle yet they won't get up early or eat cleaner or whatever the case may be, like, and they're complaining like okay like you know what i mean and it's like sometimes you're like it's not that easy for everyone but also you're right you know what i mean like they're for instance it's beyonce it's zendaya it's tracy ellis ross it's miley cyrus it's those goddesses that like live in life that is beautiful and luxurious but also like worked for and worked from the ground up and worked with blood sweat tears and ultimately trust in their power trust in their potential and investment in their power and potential i would also say princess diana is a sun goddess just because i think an element of sun goddesses is the fact that like you're not going to tell them who they are one thing about a sun goddess you're not going to put them in no box you're not going to tell them who they are you're not going to tell them where the ceiling stops you're not going to tell them um, their capacity they'll tell you and if anything you limiting them is the invitation for them to go harder and go louder um, and they're the ones that not only create lives for themselves that are boundless but also like they in that path that they blaze for themselves they give permission for those watching them to do the same so that's why I say that goddess sun goddesses are like the goddesses of all goddesses because it's in us witnessing and and basking in their glow that we say like oh we can also have whatever we want if we show up for ourselves the way that they do so yeah beyonce 
Beyonce, Tracee Ellis Ross, Zendaya. I mean, come on. Um, Goddess of Shun, Citrine, and Sunflowers are what you are represented by, your emblems. And as far as affirmations go, I think the most beautiful affirmation to align with the Sun Goddess is I am free to be the fullest version of myself. So after listening to this back, and I have, by the way, like a full version of this on my Instagram in terms of like, yeah, graphics to more easily ingest it. But if any of these archetypes either call on you to be more deeply worked with, like if you heard Sun Goddess and you're like, damn, like, that's the kind of bitch I want to be. Um, sit with that and recognize like, okay, well, how can I begin to embody that energy a bit more? I also do one-on-one -on -one sessions for anyone who's wanting to deepen their own um, sense of goddess empowerment and goddess activation. I also do group workshops, so look out for that. But if you want to work with me one-on-one -on, -one on this kind of stuff, you can. I also have, obviously these goddesses are connected. Like for example, sun goddess is very deeply connected with her solar plexus, whereas a pleasure goddess is more in her sacral chakra. Um, so yeah, knowing what to work with is important. So if you ever want to reach out to me, you can. But otherwise, you can also navigate this intuitively. Like if you know, like, you know, I've, I've been too much of a moon goddess, right? Because there's shadow and light to every aspect, to every archetype, right? So for instance, if you are too much of a, of a dark goddess, you may get so lost in your shadows, you don't let yourself see the light. And that's obviously not conducive to growth or healing. Um, and if you're too much of a moon goddess, right? If you're too deep in that archetype, you are holding so much space for others that you're drowning in emotion that doesn't even belong to you, right? So it's so important to recognize which archetype you live in, which archetype um, are you imbalanced in, where do you need more of, what do you need less of, um, and also recognize the people around you. Who are you surrounded by? Do you have fairy goddesses in your life that like help you stay grounded when you get overwhelmed by like the hoopla of life? Or, you know, do you have that moon goddess in your life that you can come to to just be held by? Um, do you need to embody more of a moon goddess for yourself? Are you so codependent that you can't be that for yourself? Really take the time to recognize which archetypes resonate, which ones repel a bit, which ones do you want to work with a bit deeper, which ones do you see yourself in. Um, feel free to comment or share with me where you see yourself in these. Um, especially like, I think it's fun to be like, I'm for sure like a sun goddess moon, pleasure goddess, sun, fairy goddess rising. <laughs> And like a desperation to somehow be a dark goddess, but I just know that I'm not. But anyway, um, yeah, that is my offering for now. Uh, I hope that you are well. If you want to work with me or consume more of my content, you can do so by following me on Instagram at Jasmine Kylene. Um, booking a one-on-one -on -one with me by visiting my website at jasminekylene.com. Or subscribing for more of this. Okay, <laughs> have an amazing week or weekend. That's all. <laughs>